In this video, we introduce two more nonlinear functions that are very useful in modeling real world situations the exponential and logarithmic functions. Exponential functions are functions which take the form y equal to some number raised to the x. This is a bit different from what we're used to, where we'd normally have x, the variable, raised to some number as the power. They're reversing places here. Now some restrictions that we have are that we don't look at a equal to 1, so we restrict it to a not equal to 1. Obviously 1 to the x would always be 1 and be quite boring. We also have that a is greater than 0. Some common examples that you'll see from time to time are the natural exponential or common exponential e to the x and 10x, and also 2 to the x, which is often used in computer science. The graphs of all of these exponential functions, a to the x, have a similar shape and look something like the graphs given here. 2 to the x is shown as the solid line and the more steeply uh, increasing e to the x as the dotted line. 10 to the x rises much more quickly again. Now all of these graphs of y equal to a to the x go through the point x equal to 0, y equal to 1. They never become negative, but as we move towards minus infinity, they approach 0 closer and closer the further we go. They just never touch it. Some plots of a to the x for a less than 1, but still greater than 0, are shown in this picture. Now instead of a less than 1, we could actually treat these as a greater than 1, but with negative exponents. So for example, y equal to 1 on 3 all to the x is exactly the same function as y equal to 3 to the minus x. Again, the graphs of all of these functions pass through 0, 1, never become negative, but in the case of a less than 1, it's as we move towards positive infinity in the x direction that the graph approaches but never touches a function value of 0. Later on, when we look at uh, exponential growth and exponential decay, graphs such as these match the behaviours of real quantities which decay exponentially, whereas graphs such as these match real situations where the quantity grows exponentially. If we multiply functions like a to the x by some constant, like we see here with the k, the graph simply crosses the, uh, the y-axis at 0k instead of 0, 1. So you can see here, as k increases, the y-intercept moves up the y-axis. The function is also uh, amplified in the same way at every other x-value as well. To move from exponential functions to the logarithmic functions, we're first going to define the logarithm. A logarithm is actually just a different way of writing an exponential. And in fact, the logarithm function and the exponential functions are example of what people call inverse functions. Inverse functions are functions which can undo each other's actions on a quantity. For example, when you're solving equations, you might want to get at something that's inside an exponential. You can take the logarithm of it, and they undo each other, giving you the quantity you're trying to get at. But back to the logarithm itself, Given y equal to a to the x, we can also define x to be the logarithm of y to the base of a. So it's almost like a reverse way of saying the exponential function. y equal to a to the x and x equal to log base a of y. Both of these mean the same thing. So for example, if we wanted to write the exponential statement y equal to 3 to the x in a logarithmic form, we simply need to identify the base, which is 3, so we can write log base 3 of y is equal to x. Equivalent statements. The statement 3 squared equal to 9 is something we're obviously quite familiar with. 3 times 3 is 9. But we can also write this or say this in a logarithmic form. We can say that 2 is the base 3 logarithm of the number 9. And similarly, 3 to the minus 2, which we can see as 1 over 3 squared, or 1 over 9, is the same as saying that minus 2 is again the base 3 logarithm, this time of 1 ninth. 
Taking this a step further, this example asks us to solve some equations. Solve each of the following logarithmic equations for x. So remembering the relationship that x equal to log base a of y is the same as y equal to a to the x, we can change this 2 equal to log base 10 of x into, first of all, writing the 10 as the base and the 2 as the index is equal to x. In other words, this equation's solution is x equal to 100. Similarly, we can take log base 5 of x equal to 3 and write this as x is equal to 5 to the power 3 or x equal to 125. To finish off this uh, video, let's have a look at some logarithmic functions. One easy way to think of logarithmic functions and their graphs is to use the fact that logarithmic functions and exponential functions with the same base form what are called an example of inverse functions or inverse function pairs. Now inverse function pairs have graphs that are reflected across the line y equal to x. In other words, if we can draw an exponential function such as the solid line here, which is y equal to e to the x, its mirror image across the line y equal to x, the dotted line, is the graph of the corresponding logarithmic function. So for e to the x, we talk about the natural logarithm ln of x. Similarly, for another function over here where we've got not e to the x, but 2 to the x as the solid line, log base 2 of x is the mirror image in the line y equals to x. The logarithms never go negative, sorry, never have values for x negative. They move down towards negative infinity the closer and closer the x value gets to zero. So in this video, we've introduced exponential and logarithmic functions, examples of nonlinear functions. We've also looked at the graphs of these functions. We saw how to use logarithms to express exponentials in different forms and how to, use lo uh, how to solve logarithmic equations.